Hey people of YouTube, today we're covering the complete installation of the 52 inch Castleford ceiling fan by Home Decorators Collection. If you found this video, you might be stuck in your own installation or you're looking for some help, we're here to do just that. We've already unpacked this fan and we're going to install it step by step all the way to turning it on and everything in between. But if you want to skip ahead to any point in the installation, use the links below and that'll take you right to that point so you don't have to watch the whole video. And if after watching the video you found it helpful, please click like and subscribe and that'll help other people find it as well. Now before we get started, let's just talk about the Castleford real quick. It has a six-way color-changing integrated LED light kit. This is going to let you choose from six different color temperatures ranging from 2700K warm white all the way up to 6500K daylight deluxe. So integrating this fan into your home's current color scheme isn't going to be an issue. It also has some great install features like a slide-on mounting bracket and the receiver for the remote has a quick connect wire harness plug to make connecting to the fan quick and easy. So just a couple of notes before getting started. Please make sure that the electricity is turned off at the breaker box and at the wall switch. If you don't feel comfortable working around electricity, please consult with a licensed electrician. And one other note is if you're hanging this fan where there is just a light fixture on your ceiling, you need to make sure that the outlet box is clearly marked acceptable for fan support. If not, you'll need to replace that before beginning. So as you can see here, we've already unpacked the fan and I've opened up the manual to the parts page we're just going to go over all the parts to make sure we have everything before beginning, and that way we don't get stuck along the way. So first up, you have the slide-on mounting bracket, and that comes pre-installed inside the canopy with the decorative ring on the bottom. And we'll show you in the first step how to remove that to get started. You'll have five reversible blades, the light kit pan, the ball and down rod assembly, the decorative motor collar cover, You'll have the outer glass light shade and the inner light shade. You have the LED module that comes with the finial pre-attached. You have the fan motor. If installing with an extension down rod, you'll have a bit of extension wiring. And the remote and receiver. Now the battery is included for your convenience. And as mentioned, the receiver has a quick connect wire harness plug to make wiring to the fan quick and easy. And the remote also includes a wall cradle for convenient storage when it's not in use. And you also have a hardware pack. And the hardware pack has the plastic wire nuts and the blade attachment screws. Okay, so we have everything here. Just some tools we're going to need for this easy project. A Phillips head screwdriver. We like to have a long one and a short one on hand. Flathead screwdriver. You may need some wire cutters and strippers. We like to have a line voltage tester on hand just to make sure the wires aren't live before beginning. You'll need some electrical tape and of course a ladder. So we have everything we need, we're ready to go. Let's do this. The mounting bracket comes pre-installed inside the canopy with the decorative ring attached. To remove the mounting bracket, first pull off the decorative ring. It's magnetic, so it just pulls off. You'll notice an alignment post at the base of the canopy. You'll need to loosen, but not remove, the two screws in the base of the canopy enough so that that alignment post can exit that hole. Once those two screws are loosened, you'll simply lift and twist the mounting bracket to remove it from the canopy. This fan features a slide-on mounting bracket for easy installation. The bracket has two keyhole slots that will align with the two screws in the outlet box. Simply align the slots of the mounting bracket with the screws in the outlet box and then slide the hold in place before tightening. This is just a demonstration. To install the mounting bracket, begin by using a Phillips head screwdriver to loosen but not remove the two screws in the outlet box. Next, feed the house supply lines through the mounting bracket and align the slots of the mounting bracket with the screws that were loosened in the outlet box. Then slide the mounting bracket into place. Then, use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten both of the outlet box screws and secure the mounting bracket. Make sure that both screws are completely tightened. Begin by pulling the rubber motor stops out of the fan housing. These are just used to prevent the motor from moving during shipment and can be discarded once removed. Before routing the wires and attaching the down rod, you'll first need to loosen but not remove the set screw on top of the motor collar. Remove the warning label and use a flathead screwdriver to loosen but not remove this screw. This fan also features a safety tab on the motor collar that will lock the down rod in place should it ever loosen over time. 
If you ever need to remove the down rod, push the tab down to unscrew the down rod. Before routing the wires through the ball and down rod assembly, gently pull the green wire from inside the ball and down rod assembly. Next, place the down rod through the canopy so that the largest opening of the canopy is on the ball side. Next, place the decorative ring on the down rod, making sure that the black side with the slots is touching the canopy. The last piece is a decorative motor collar cover. Place that on the down rod so that the largest opening is facing towards the threaded end of the down rod. Then gently run the wires from the fan through the bottom of the down rod so that the plug exits the ball portion. Gently pull the wires through until the down rod meets the motor collar. Attach the down rod to the fan by screwing it into the motor collar. Once the down rod is screwed in, use a flathead screwdriver to completely tighten the set screw on the top of the motor collar. Once the set screw is tightened, slide the decorative motor collar cover down the down rod until it meets the top of the fan. Now the fan is ready to be hung. Before hanging the fan, it's important to note the slot in the ball that will engage the tab in the mounting bracket. When hanging, you'll insert the ball into the mounting bracket and then rotate the fan assembly until you feel the slot engage the tab. This is just a close-up demonstration. Before hanging the fan, move the house supply lines out of the way to make room for the ball to insert into the mounting bracket. Lift the fan assembly up to the ceiling, noting the location of the slot and the tab in the mounting bracket. Insert the ball into the mounting bracket. Rotate the fan assembly until you feel the slot engage the tab in the mounting bracket. The fan will drop slightly when properly seated. Prepare the remote by first sliding it out of the wall cradle, and then slide the battery compartment cover off of the back of the remote. Install the included battery according to the diagram inside the battery compartment. If you have more than one remote control fan in the house, it's a good idea to change the dip switches in the remote and the receiver. The dip switches in the remote are located inside the battery compartment. The dip switches on the receiver are located under a rubber plug. Simply pull the plug up to expose the dip switches and use a small tool to set those switches to any combination of up or down. You can set the dip switches to any combination as long as both the remote and the receiver have the same dip switch settings. Once the dip switches are set, replace the rubber plug on the receiver and then replace the battery compartment cover onto the remote. You'll notice that one side of the receiver has the quick connect plug that will connect to the fan wiring. The other side of the receiver has two wires to connect to the house wiring. When installing the receiver, make sure the flat side of the receiver is facing towards the ceiling. Insert the receiver into the mounting bracket with the antenna side first so that the receiver rests on the ball and down rod assembly. Begin wiring the fan by taking the plug from the fan wires and inserting that into the plug from the receiver. The connectors will simply snap together. Next, take the green wire from the ball and down rod assembly and twist that wire together with the green wire from the mounting bracket. Next, connect the green wires to the bare copper house wire. This is the ground connection. Finish the connection using a plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Next, take the white wire from the receiver and twist that wire together with the white wire from the house supply lines. These are the neutral connections. Twist those two wires together and finish the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Finish the wiring by taking the black wire from the receiver and connecting that wire to the black wire from the house supply lines. This is the power connection. Twist those two wires together and secure the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Once all the wire connections have been made, gently tuck the wires around the mounting bracket and into the outlet box to make room for the canopy to attach. The canopy attaches to the mounting bracket using two keyhole slots on either side of the canopy that will align with the two screws at the base of the mounting bracket. Align those holes with the screws in the mounting bracket 
and push the canopy up so the screws come through the keyhole slots. And then twist to hold the canopy in place. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten those screws and secure the canopy. You can tilt the fan to make extra room for the screwdriver to access the screws. Make sure both screws are completely tight. The decorative ring is magnetic. You just need to align the slots of the decorative ring with the two screws at the base of the canopy, and then slide the decorative ring up, and it'll attach itself to the bottom of the canopy. The blades are reversible, so choose the finish that you'd like and make sure that that finish is facing towards the floor. The blades attach to the fan using three holes in the blade that will align with three holes in the bottom of the fan motor. Insert the end of the fan blade through the slot in the side of the motor. Align the three screw holes in the fan blade with the three holes in the bottom of the motor. Secure the blade using the blade attachment screws. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to start the first screw. Do not completely tighten the screw as you'll need a little bit of play to align the other two screw holes. Insert the second screw into the screw hole and start that screw using a Phillips head screwdriver. Remember, do not completely tighten this screw yet. Start the third screw in the third hole of the fan blade. Completely tighten this screw and then completely tighten the two remaining screws. Repeat this process for the four remaining blades. Make sure all the fan blade screws are completely tightened to ensure proper operation. The light kit pan attaches to the fan using two keyhole slots and one standard screw hole. These will align with the three screws on the black bracket at the base of the motor. Begin by removing and saving one of the three screws using a Phillips head screwdriver. Then loosen, but do not remove, the two remaining screws in the black bracket. Feed the wires from the fan through the center hole and align the keyhole slots of the light kit pan with those screws in the black bracket and then push up and twist to hold the light kit pan in place. Then use the screw that was removed and saved and a Phillips head screwdriver and insert the screw into the standard screw hole of the light kit pan. Completely tighten that screw and then tighten the two remaining screws in the keyhole slots. Make sure all three screws are completely tight. The LED light kit attaches to the fan in the same way using two keyhole slots and one standard screw hole. These will align with the three screws in the light kit pan. Begin by first removing and saving one screw and then loosening but not removing the two remaining screws in the light kit pan. Next. Connect the LED module to the fan by inserting the plugs from the LED module into the wires from the fan. Connect the white wire from the LED module to the white wire from the fan and the black wire from the LED module to the blue wire from the fan. The plugs will snap together when properly inserted. Once the wire connections are made, tuck the wires up into the light kit pan and align the keyhole slots of the light kit with the two screws that were loosened in the light kit pan. Press up and twist to engage those two screws. Then use the screw that was removed and saved and insert that into the standard screw hole of the light kit and completely tighten using a Phillips head screwdriver. Once that screw is completely tightened, completely tighten the two remaining screws in the light kit pan. Before attaching the light shades to the light kit, you'll first need to remove the finial, two hex nuts, and rubber washer that are pre-assembled on the threaded post of the light kit. Just unscrew them and put them aside and save them. Once those pieces are removed and saved, place the white light shade onto the threaded post so the threaded post comes through the center hole. Then use one of the hex nuts to secure the light shade to the light kit. 
Simply finger tighten this piece. There are no tools necessary. Next, place the glass shade onto the threaded post of the light kit, making sure that the shade is flush with the light kit pan. Secure the light shade using the rubber washer and the hex nut. Again, simply finger tighten the hex nut. Do not use any tools as over tightening may cause the glass to crack. Complete the installation by screwing the finial onto the end of the threaded post. Just finger tighten this piece as well. The fan is controlled by the included remote control. Press the power button to turn the fan and light on and off. Press the fan speed button to cycle through the fan's three speeds. Press and release the light control button to turn the light on or off. Press and hold the light button to cycle through the dimming function. Press and release the color temperature button to cycle through the light's six color temperature settings, ranging from 2700K warm white to 6500K daylight deluxe. This fan features a three-speed reversible motor. The reverse switch is located on top of the motor housing. Switch left creates a downward airflow to create a cooling effect during the hotter months. Switch right creates an upward airflow to pull warm air from the ceiling and push it down into the room during the cooler months. Make sure the fan is off and not running before changing the switch position. To attach the wall cradle to the wall, begin by removing the screw cover by sliding it out of the wall cradle. Then choose a position on the wall where you'd like to store the remote when not in use. Use the included screws and a Phillips head screwdriver to attach the wall cradle to the wall. Make sure both screws are tight. You may want to use anchors that are also provided when attaching the wall cradle to the wall. Once the screws are tight, reinsert the screw cover into the slots of the wall cradle. Now the wall cradle is ready to hold the remote when not in use. Congratulations, your ceiling fan installation is now complete. Time to sit back, relax with a nice tall beverage and enjoy your new ceiling fan. As always, thanks for watching and if you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe down below and that'll help other people find it as well. And as we always say around here, keep it breezy.